working on the emergency brake handle because it was broken so I got this off but in my attempt to do that I broke this pin off that acts as a guide for this action and of course if you remember these old time you get that locking and to turn it left and then it unlocks and this pin just keeps it from turning left and right not a big deal but I broke it so I want to fix it this is hardened steel and I can't drill that very easy I tried and it's just going to dull my bits nor can I tap it so what I'm going to do is turn down a screw or something like this so it'll be a press fit I'd like to try to keep the head on there um, it had some kind of a well, I'll see if I can find it it's over here somewhere that this was the top of it here so if I can manufacture something that looks close or at least gets the job done we'll fix it up I know you can't actually see the piece I'm working on but it's just that screw I'm not a machinist so don't do as I do <laughs> I'm trying to fix something up here it's just a screw head that I took the threads off and machined it down to the approximate size of the hole which was uh, 3.98 millimeters or whatever of course a slightly smaller so it goes in there I was hoping for a little bit better press fit but it's a little bit loose so what I did is use this Loctite uh, glue here as opposed to JB Weld um, so anyway it functions customer stated he wants his heater to work so beyond replacing that cable after further investigation, I have found that the heater assembly is not secured so that you can't get any of the ducts lined up. This duct work here on top is held in by one bolt. It's broken off on the other two attachment points, so I need to get that out, see if I can repair it or if there was a replacement part. Actuator back down in here, it's not even connected. See it. So I got some work behind the dash I need to do. In addition to um, some vacuum lines that are not connected and missing, so I don't know where they go. I'm going to try to research that and get those connected so we can get his heater fixed. Well, this is available. It's about 150 to 180 dollars new. I went on eBay and found quite a few of them actually. That's just uh, a nicer price. And the cheapest one with shipping was still $85 about, so let me see if I can fix this one. Got a neighbor just stopped by, but he's heading off now. So I'm going to rely on this glue here to see if it won't hold these tabs in place. This one is in uh, glued, and once that's dry, I'm going to kind of build up the whole area to uh, make it stronger. But the first thing I do is identify where these go. And got that out of the way, so let me continue on here. Not that you all need to see how to glue something, but uh, most of my video in these series is not a to-do video. How yeah, to-do how-to videos. It's more of what I have done, and it's documenting the work for the owner uh, on this vehicle and the '59 Ford truck I have as well. So I. Well, apologize to some of you that I'm not doing how-to videos. It's just what I have done. But anyway, I'll hold this for a second. Well, now I can't turn off the camera, so... <laughs> you all mind watching glue dry? But we need to get this painted black here on the inside because I've got new center caps coming. God, I hope they fit. This is a two and one eighth inch opening in they're not stock, I was told, for this car. Uh, although this is a Mustang wheel. So I found some that safe for two one eighth inch opening. And that's what this is, so they should fit. Anyway, those brand new parts are gonna look great, but it's gonna make the wheel look even more old so I'm going to paint this black section continue cleaning the chrome on the roll tire and then what's about as good as we can get it on the budget got all the black sanded down and uh, cleaned up so I had the tedious job of masking off the chrome areas you don't want painted 
but I don't mind doing that kind of work. I don't have to think about it too much. And this wheel, I've already done one, so I've got a head start on y'all, but this wheel's not too bad because it has little ridges where you can drag your thumbnail across to identify your edge and then use your exacto knife to clean it up and you get this. So I'll do the same to the bottom half here. And uh, of course the whole wheel will be covered, but that's that. And I've got my trash can on a set of wheels so I can just sit here and turn the work in front of me instead of me turning around the work so that helps a little move things along. Alright, all masked up, ready to paint. Uh, it's raining outside, so unfortunately I have to do this inside and I hate painting in the shop because of the overspray. But I need this to dry overnight. What's that, 62, 63 in the shop? Not the most ideal conditions for letting paint and glue dry, but it's tacking up pretty good. They're staying in place. I'll put a little pressure on them. It looks like it's going to work, so we'll save a good about a money there. And we need to let that dry overnight. So what else can we get into? Oh yeah, I painted this this morning too. Used a different paint this time. This is really looking better. And I don't know if I'll show the fixes on this. It's just a matter of tidying up. There's a few wires that are not connected. I try to run down and see if I can't figure that out, but we'll get this cleaned up. I have the Mustang running in the background, warming up so I can do the compression check finally. And the tabs that I glued on here, it's been overnight and the glue is still pretty tacky. So I'm going to let that set for another day before I put that in. So I have the tools now uh, from Amazon. Company OTC comes pretty highly recommended, some good reviews. Uh, a lot of high-end mechanics on YouTube have these sets. Compression gauge set, and this is the cylinder leak down test, which I've never owned, so that's going to be kind of fun to play with. So let's get the cylinders checked out on this engine. I'll be able to show you this bank because I can turn the starter over and hold the gauge at the same time. That battery's been charged and it's still kind of slow, but I see what 95, that's 100, 105, 110, yeah, so that's 95, it's only number one. I'll continue and get the rest of them, write them down for you. I have the first four cylinders done. This engine doesn't turn over very good, that thing should be spinning really freely with all the plugs out. It's got a new battery. The alternator is charging. Um, may have a, another issue we've got to run down. While we're waiting for the battery to charge, I installed the newly painted ashtray. On the compressed air side, the left hand gauge is what's incoming. You can't exceed 100 PSI or the, the engine could turn over. I actually went to 50 PSI, the engine started to turn over. I'm plugged in a number four cylinder. That's the last cylinder towards the pa or on the passenger side. And the difference is about five PSI, which is satisfactory. Anything more than that, they consider uh, investigation is required. And then you listen for where air is escaping. If you see bubbles in the radiator cap, then you have a gas or crack head. If it's escaping in the carburetor, you have intake valve. If it's escaping the exhaust, then you have exhaust valve. And what I'm hearing is it is escaping in the uh, crankcase breather on the other side. So that indicates defective rings or worn cylinders. And that pretty much confirms the engine's basically worn out because we're showing low compression pretty much evenly across all cylinders. I don't know if I have the right specs. The, the closest I could find is 150 to 170 and we're getting at best 120, most of them are around 100. All right, we're in number seven, 40 PSI. The difference is uh, about seven PSI, so we're a little bit outside of what they consider normal parameters. I can hear the air coming out of the breather cap there. I can't put, your, put you down there, it's too loud with the rain in the background. So all cylinders are about the same, both in compression and this leak down test, so we just got a worn engine. I really did think we had a, a misfire, but, but apparently it's just a little bit warm. I decided to bring you all into the office here. It's pretty loud out in the shop. 
with the rain falling on that metal roof. So we're going to close out this video. My part three is done. And the way I shoot these videos is I work during the week. I get this thing edited, try to get it out to you all each Saturday morning. So there's some consistency there. And of course, with life, other chores getting away, I may miss a time or two, but I'll catch up to you. I appreciate y'all hanging in there for this series of videos. I'm really enjoying working on this Mustang. I like the old stuff. It's simple like me and I can keep up with it. The cylinder uh, compression checks threw me for a loop. I really did think we were going to find a dead cylinder. Uh, in a previous video I mentioned that we had uh, number seven for sure suspect. That's a cylinder not contributing, but it seems to be fine. The spark plug is firing, the wire is not broken, the um, distributor is working. So I went to the mechanical side of things with a compression check, cylinder leak down check. They both confirmed to me anyway that we have a worn out engine. All the compressions are low, but they're all within about, I think, 15 degrees or so. Anyway, lots more work coming up. I hope you come back to join me. I sure enjoy your comments, uh, especially to the subscribers that are here every Saturday. I especially appreciate you guys. Your loyalty to uh, the channel has been very, uh, very cool. I think it's a lot of fun. So I guess I'll let you go now. Thanks a lot. See you on the next video.